Yeah, great. Um, Kristen, welcome to our uh, Career Awareness Webinar, a, a, a project that really was initiated by Matt and the Chamber on behalf of the youth entrepreneurs classrooms across Montana when the, uh, when the coronavirus shut schools down. So we are so honored to have someone with your experience, your background, uh, share your wisdom and your story uh, with our educators and students today. Uh, so we, we really appreciate it and look forward to, uh, to, hearing, to hearing your stories and to having you uh, mo motivate some kids to, to perhaps pursue similar stories. So thank you so much. And again, I want to hand it back to Matt. He's really in the chamber, really the engines behind all of this. So Great. Thanks, Jim. Um, I'm going to mute you and we'll get hand it over to Kristen Heck, who is uh, our business leader today. She is the owner and CEO of LC Staffing. Welcome, Kristen. And uh, to echo Jim, thank you so much for giving us your time to do this. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for asking me to be one of your presenters. Um, I had the opportunity of meeting Jim, I think January of this year. My goodness, maybe it's been a lot, maybe it was a year ago, um, but we met at Business Days at the Capitals and I learned about this program and I was so excited to hear about it. Um, I remember being a young entrepreneur, I remember having the desires of wanting to sail my own ship from a young age. And um, I see that Montana offers a prime opportunity for young people uh, to start or engage or lead and grow businesses across Montana. So I'm, I'm really excited for all of you that you have this sort of program that feeds that desire and educates that desire and puts a network and a support system around you to do that. So um, I do have a few slides to go through today and a presentation I've put together, but I would love to hear your questions. That's what's most important to me. Um, and um, of course, make myself available to any of you afterwards. If you have um, you know, questions um, or opportunities that you'd like to discuss or people that I can help uh, put you in touch with, I'm happy to leverage my network for you. Okay, so I am going to start the slide here. Um, can everyone see the slides okay? I assume so. Uh, so Youth Entrepreneur Program, I learned about that recently. And I want to say from my experience, I've had the opportunity, the great honor of working with so many entrepreneurs across the state of Montana. Um, it's fascinating to me that I get to go in and see um, so many different kinds of businesses, how they're run, um, uh, the teams that they put together, the products and the services that they deliver, sometimes with great complexity. Uh, so I have so much um, admiration for business owners across Montana. I think that entrepreneurs, from my experience, they're really the innovators, they're the solutions providers, they're the risk takers, the world changers, the job creators, and that's something that's really near and dear to my heart, and people growers, of course. Um, I think this is just what Montana needs. I think we need a lot more of it. Uh, I want to start out by saying um, that I, I find great value in each job, no matter how um, small the start is or entry level. I think that each job and each project is a really important part of your journey. Um, I, from my own experience, speaking from my own experience, I think that one day you'll look back and see why each of these learning opportunities came to you and how they uh, prepared you for what you were ultimately meant to accomplish in this world and then share with your communities. Um, I would like to also say that I don't, you know, I, I've developed this theory over time that there really are no wrong choices when it comes to this. I know as a young person and having uh, two young adult daughters, how much they struggled with all of the, the choices available to them as far as education, 
um, career? What do I want to do? Who, I, who do I want to be? And there's so many choices that sometimes that can be um, overwhelming or difficult to narrow down. 19% um, of individuals who have a college degree actually work in their field of study. Um, I think college degrees, um, training certificates are wonderful. Uh, they have an opportunity to, to build our base of knowledge and critical thinking and networking and, um, you know, formal education is wonderful. But, and, and same thing goes with the job. You, uh, sometimes people get confused, should I take this job or this job is too entry level or I don't want to have this job that seems so menial to me and not important. But those things are really important because you will learn some really important life lessons in those jobs. And um, again, I think uh, I would encourage young people to not be so concerned about making the wrong choice about a job or an education, but just to really immerse yourself in that opportunity and realize it's a part of your life's journey and look for what those opportunities to learn from them are because someday you will look back and say, I'm really glad I had this job as a server. Uh, because you're going to develop really in, important and essential life skills that will carry you far doing those things. Right. Okay, I wanted to, can everybody see that or is part of the screen being taken up on the share? Matthew, can you chime in on that for me? We are all good, Kristen. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so I wanted to talk briefly to help to help you understand why people would use a staffing firm and what they do. Um, for um, staffing firms, for many companies, as well as individuals, is they're really their shortest path to success. They need people, they need quality people, and they need them right now. Uh, or someone is looking for a job at, or a new career and growth opportunity, and they, they want that sooner than later. We are an intermediary that puts those individuals together very quickly. Um, and we are considered a professional B2B service. So business to business service. Um, you, there are other B2B services like accounting, uh, banking, um, attorneys. So again, it makes sense for some companies to align themselves with these professional services to help them achieve their important company goals and outcomes. Um, 90% of manufacturing firms and seasonal businesses use staffing firms. And um, it helps them to control their cost of doing business and again, to help them ramp up quickly. Um, we are uh, in the business of recruiting 365 days a year. And we're, we, I like to say we're a recruiting machine. So that's our business model is we recruit all the time. And typically when a company needs to hire people, it's a process. It could take them weeks, sometimes months to gear up with the workforce that they need because they're not in the business of recruiting. They're in the business of running their business. So we help companies scale up very quickly when they need workforce. Um, let's see. So our inventory in our business is people. And uh, whereas in other business, their inventory could be the products that they provide or the services that they provide. Um, we're different in that we are not just like a job posting site. So a lot of people and companies utilize job postings to attract the workforce that they need. <laughs> but we're more than that because we are actually a relationship. We are... <clears throat> Again, the accessible human being, a professional service provider that a company can speak with and say, these are my specific needs, this is what I'm looking for. And then because we're very ingrained in the communities that we're in, we have several recruiters and team members, we know not only people who are looking for work, you know, responding to job postings, which we would do, we would do the job postings, but we're also very familiar with the talent available that's maybe not looking for work. And we can tap on those individuals and say, hey, I know about a great opportunity. Would you like to learn more? Um, so that provides a much broader candidate base, what we would call a passive candidate base, people who aren't looking, but 
would consider making a move for the right opportunity. So as you can see, if you own a business and you're looking to hire someone who's a real contributor, so someone who can help your business grow, you're probably gonna wanna find someone who's currently doing that for another company uh, because they're gonna be proven at that. And, and that, so that's something that we can help do, help businesses locate and find because we're in the business of recruiting all the time. I like to say every business and every, um, every worker should know a recruiter and should have a recruiter in their life because you never know when you're going to need one. And when you do, you want to make sure you got the right person with the connections that you're looking for. So I would encourage you to think about that as you start out in your careers. Uh, so employers pay for our services. Employees do not pay for our services. Um, the job candidates are recruited by us. They're interviewed by us, screened by us. And we only send the top candidates um, to the employer. So again, they're not having to run through resumes, talk to lots of people, respond back to candidates. We take care of all that. So again, we're just delivering to them the top deliverables and saving them a lot of time. Um, see, we keep the process moving forward with companies too. And most people don't wake up and say, I can't wait to interview people today. I can't wait to go through those resumes today. Um, that's an uncomfortable thing for most people to do. We're in the business of that, so we're used to it. So we keep the process moving forward with both parties. Where are you at on the second interview? What did you think of that company that you interviewed that with? What feedback do you have? Are you interested in moving forward or not? So again, we're the, we're the individuals that keep that process moving forward uh, so that the company gets the talent that they need. And if they're not moving forward quickly enough, they could miss out on great talent. And in the last couple of years, that's something we've definitely experienced with not enough of the um, available workforce talent needed for most em employers in Montana. Um, so we, we shorten the time to hire cycle for businesses. And so that can be a great competitive advantage for them. We also help companies control their cost of payroll and help them be more profitable and have less risk. Because many of the folks we put to work, not all, but many of them are what we would call a temp to hire process. So a company tries them out for a certain number of weeks on our payroll before they decide to hire them onto their own payroll. And that gives them an opportunity, especially in Montana, that's a really important decision because once you hire someone, you kind of own them. Uh, you know, as far as the liability and responsibility of an employee, and you want to make sure this is the right person. And an interview, in my opinion, is just a performance. Some people are really good at interviewing. Some people are very poor at interviewing, but it really has no bearing on how they're going to do the job, unless maybe they're a sales professional. So um, really how employers learn about if someone's going to be that key contributor on their team is getting them into the team, working with them. Of course, things like references help. We always check job, job references and, and do background checks. I find that references are really a better indicator for how someone's going to perform on the job than the actual interview. So again, once we get someone into the organization, we try them out for a few weeks, then as an employer, we can really make a better decision about if this person's the right fit for organization and our team and our culture. Uh, let's see, cost of payroll, try before you uh, bring someone on. Uh, this also allows employers and HR managers to focus on other important priorities in their organization, like employee engagement and training. Again, it's not that the business owner, the HR manager can't do the recruiting, they can, but it's very time consuming. And so this allows them to work on things that are maybe more important or add more value to their organization. We um, also contact our clients and let them know when talent has become available that they kind of get first crack at and would be interested in. So we are well aware of what our, our clients and our customers need in order to grow their organization. And so uh, we, we call on companies when we hear about talent that's available and that serves both parties very well. Okay, 
Sorry, guys. So I thought I had something else on here, and I it's probably on another slide. But I wanted to share that staffing employees um, work in virtually all sorts of uh, industries. Um, 37% in industrial. So I mentioned that this model works really well for manufacturing because it allows those manufacturers to quickly ramp up workforce to meet peak demand. And then when they don't need them anymore, the staffing firm is responsible for those individuals to find them another assignment. So it doesn't impact the company's um, unemployment costs and that sort of thing. But in general, staffing employees, um, a large amount of them work in industrial trades. 28% uh, in office clerical, 13% in professional um, and managerial, and 13% in engineering, information technology, and scientific fields, and 9% in healthcare. Uh, so for opportunity seekers, we offer a simple and easy process and access to many jobs with just one application. Many of our jobs are not advertised. Um, and so if someone is registered with us, they're going to hear about more job opportunities than maybe are just advertised across um, other channels for recruiting. Um, we also provide encouragement, feedback, and a voice and access to employers for candidates. We open doors for people that they might not otherwise be able to open because we have relationship with hiring managers usually several hiring managers across the organizations that we work with. So again, we can help an employer understand why we think they should take a look at this talent or this person, why we think they would be a good fit for their organization. Okay, so I have a video I wanna show that just talks a little bit maybe more from a client perspective about why companies like to use us. And Matthew, if for some reason you guys can't hear this, would you please let me know? Sure will. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Rick Noche. I'm the tanker shop manager for Neptune Aviation here in Missoula, Montana. And I've been with the company about 14 years. And I've been using LT staffing since I was the shop manager, which is about eight or nine years now. Here at Neptune, what we do is we operate firefighting tanker aircraft. We are a contractor to the United States Forest Service. And what you see here in this shop, we're the heavy maintenance facility. So we bring our airplanes in, we do all the inspections, open them all up, we repair engines, landing gear. We go do the complete airplane every winter, getting them ready to go out so that they're reliable, safe aircraft for our crews to operate. We've uh, gotten I don't know how many people over the years have LC, but they've all been very. Kristen, we lost the sound when you muted. Tell them what you need. Be pretty specific so they can have a. Hey guys, are you there? Yeah, we're here. If you want to hit play again, we, as soon as you unmuted, we could hear it again. Okay, be pretty sorry. Specific so they can have a good idea of what to look for, and I think you'll be very happy with the people you get. Our partnership with LC has been a major time saver for all of us. I can just pick the phone up, make one phone call. I need two people. This is what I need, and. Next thing I know, a couple days later, here they come, and they're always a good fit with us. They, they really are a pleasure to work with. Hey, Kristen, if we could share that video out um, when we when we share out everything else, I think it'd be great. It was just a little bit choppy. We could hear him, but some of the pictures were choppy. So we'll share out that video to everyone that's uh, participating and as homework for people that aren't on here live now. Sure, I'm happy to send that to you. Sorry that I didn't stream well for you, for you folks. I know we're all um, pretty dependent on technology and bandwidth right now. Okay, guys. So um, I wanted to also share that we place on average about 1,500 people a year in jobs across Western Montana. 
Um, <clears throat> we're so we're one of the larger employers in Montana. People might not necessarily think that. Uh, we interface with because we place 1,500 people. Imagine the thousands of people that we interface with in order to you know find the right fit for an organization. So we work with thousands of opportunity seekers and hundreds of employers. And we do that because we have a pretty big staff and we have really amazing technology that helps us do that as well. But we also believe that that relationship and an opportunity to speak with a human being um, is really important. Uh, that we don't want people to feel like they're kind of lost in technology somewhere. We may, we're very good at reaching out to speaking with and working with our candidates. Um, opportunity seekers and making sure they're getting that human connection in this process. Um, again, I want to circle back to I think opportunities are everywhere and that an entry-level job will re can lead to really big things if you pursue growth there. Um, waiting for the perfect job to come along can have an opportunity cost. So by not taking a more entry-level job and waiting maybe for a a, a job that you think is better maybe isn't always the best consideration. I would encourage you if it's something that you're interested in, no matter how entry level the job is, no matter what the pay is, that maybe you should just jump in and take a chance and learn about something that you're passionate about. Um, finding um, a business that you're interested in, learning from the ground up, learning all that you can about the business and becoming indispensable can lead to really great things. So I have another video to show you guys. Hi, my name is Rick oh, Roche. I'm the wrong one. Shop manager Sorry guys. Here we go. My name is Jenna Hoffman and I'm the owner of Science Now in Hellsville. What I like about being my own business owner at Science Now is I get to meet new people every day and kind of get a different perspective of small business in Hellsville. Not only small business, but large business as well. And it's just great to be a part of the community and really feel like I'm contributing. Kelsey Staffing got me into this position five years ago, and now I am the proud owner of Science Now. It's very challenging, but rewarding. And you learn a different skill set that you wouldn't normally learn just working a nine to five job. And you take a lot more pride in what you do because you're not just doing it for you, you're building your career. If I were to tell somebody where to go and find or look for a job, I always send it to LC Staffing. We got great staff there. They very much care about the people that come in and apply with them. And they'll definitely fit you guys in the position that you need and that will work great for you. Okay, did you hear the video, Matthew? Yep, we sure did. Okay, so Jenna is an example of someone that we placed years ago who ended up working in an organization and buying the company. We've heard dozens of those types of stories along the way. Also people who've grown into leadership of an organization, traveled the world, done really exciting projects. So again, an entry level job opportunity that turned into something um, quite large. Uh, my story about LC Staffing is really an our story of LC Staffing. Um, the organization was around before Kristen. We have been in business for 35 years this year. Okay, can you see the screen, Matthew? Yeah, we can see it. It's pretty small print, but we can see it. Okay, so this is on our website, and um, I would encourage all of you to spend some time digging on our website. There's some really great resources on there for you. Uh, but this company started in 1985, and it was, um, back then it was known as Flathead Valley Labor Contractors Incorporated, and it provided temporary help to the timber industry almost exclusively. And we worked with a lot of timber mills back then. And, you know, as you know, our, um, economy um, across Montana 
moved away from uh, natural resource manufacturing. And um, as that happened, you know, this company pivoted as well. Um, in 1989, um, a gentleman named Ralph Brown purchased the company from the founder and he expanded the focus to include um, other industries and other types of placements. And then in 1990, we opened an office in Missoula. And in 1995, we opened an office in Bozeman. Um, in 97, we changed our name to labor, from labor contractors to LC Staffing Service to better reflect the scope of services that we were provided. We kind of wanted to keep the same branding, but um, have a name change that um, took out the words labor in it. So um, in 2000, I became an equity partner in the business. Um, and then I became sole owner in 2017. So there's some more information on there for you. Um, and last year we opened our fourth office in Columbia Falls. Um, so I've been involved with this company for 28 years. Um, I hope it survives beyond me for 35 more years at least. Um, and the, uh, to provide in great service for people across Montana. Um, I moved to Montana in, in 1992 and um, had to take a job to provide benefits for our family. My husband started his own business at that time. So I made the decision that I would get the job with benefits while he started his own business. And um, I didn't have an, a network of people at that time. I didn't have a lot of great connections to find a job. Um, one of the things I did is went and registered with LC Staffing. And it's funny, when I was interviewing at that time, I remember looking at the interviewer and thinking, I could do this. This is interesting to me. Um, but nothing happened at LC Staffing at that time. I ended up taking a retail job, which I did for um, full time for three months, kind of waiting for something better maybe to open up. Um, but I kept checking in with LC Staffing and uh, I remember, um, you know, feeling desperate, feeling uh, very concerned about uh, making enough money and not having the connections that I needed. And um, I don't know if they felt sorry for me, but eventually after three months, they offered me a job in-house as a receptionist. And so that was my start with LC staffing. Um, it was half the pay that I was used to making from when I moved here from out of state. Um, and I could have found a job that paid more money, but it offered the benefits and that was really important to me. And more importantly, I thought, this is interesting work. I, I think I wanna jump in and try this. Um, they told me at the time that I could be laid off in the winter if things got slow. Uh, so again, this was kind of a risky start for me, um, but that never happened. You know, I, I jumped in, um, I think provided value learned a lot about the organization and um, we were just a handful of people in a small modular commercial unit south of town when i started in, in 92. Um, i learned the business from the ground up uh, was promoted many times um, and and had the opportunity to learn most aspects of the business in that time uh, including customer service recruiting conflict management that's a big one when you're in the people business listening skills problem solving, risk management, human resources, et cetera. And then was promoted you know, from management to regional management vice president. After seven years of working and learning the business, um, I approached the owner and asked to become an equity partner. And he agreed. Um, the, the, the timing was right. The timing was right for him and the timing was right for me. I was young enough to take on the risk and he was at the age where he wanted some more freedom. And so I could provide that to him and had become somewhat indispensable to him at that point. Um, I bought in and took out business loans um, and I've been paying on those loans for 21 years now. Um, with, uh, with my leadership and um, our team brought a little tiny hobby business uh, to a successful standalone business that has been replicated in several markets and is fully scalable for growth. Um, at the time that I came into leadership roles, we did not have standard operating procedures, strategies. So, you know, there was years of those 
opportunities to come in and provide that and build this business. Um, and most importantly, learning how to bring on the right talent of a team to help us get there because one person can't do it all. You have to surround yourself with the right team members to make it happen. Okay, guys. I've got to figure out how to get back to my slides here. Kristen, I've got a couple questions if, you, if I can throw them at you. Of course. Um, so one of them that's come in is, how can high school students improve their interview skills? Practice. Practice is really good. Um, I think one of the most important things that you can do is to learn how to sell yourself. A lot of people aren't naturally gifted at interviewing. So you have to be, you have to learn your own sort of elevator speech how to promote yourself to a company and organization. So it could just be what, your, what you think your natural gifts are, your strengths are. It could be around your work ethic. It could be around your willingness. Uh, it could be around your interests. I think employers like to hire for passion. So if you, even if you're not maybe the most experienced person, but your heart's on fire to work there, that, will, that goes a lot further. For an employer because they know you're going to be there and be committed and be fully engaged. Engagement levels of employees is really important and it's you know not everyone is engaged who's at work. Um, so I think practice is really good. <clears throat> um, preparing for and learning how to answer what's called a behavioral based interview question. You can google any of this stuff out there but it would be a question about like tell me about a time when you had conflict with a coworker. What was your role in that relationship? What was the outcome? You know, so that would be a behavioral based question where someone's asking you about how you handled specifically how you handled the situation in the past. Um, but most people interview a lot and don't aren't good at it for a while. But a staffing firm is also a great place to go and practice uh, practice with your educators. I know we've been brought into high school classes. We've had high school classes come in here and go through an interview with our recruiters and we give them some feedback. Um, we'd be happy to do that. And, and I think also, if you have the right person you're interviewing with, ask them for feedback after, afterwards. Say, hey, I'm just learning about this interviewing thing. If you have any feedback for me on the interview, I'd sure appreciate it. That's great, Kristen. And you started to get into the next question, which is what are some of the more, what are some of the most difficult interview questions that you've heard of? Oh, I don't know about difficult. I think, um, I think for me, a difficult interview question would be somebody who asked something discriminatory um, or not relevant to the role. And so learning maybe how to how to respond in that situation or to to change the subject matter um maybe asking why do you and why do you ask that you know what do you what information are you looking for um i think learning how to you know especially at this age and you're in high school you don't necessarily know what your your three-year and five-year goals are i mean you ha you might have a sense of direction um, Reasons why you left a last job is an important thing to have prepared, especially if it wasn't on good terms. And it's very, very important to never speak ill of your previous employer because sometimes that can look like maybe this person doesn't have the best attitude or has kind of a victim mentality. I, I need to keep that in mind if I'm an employer about if this is some, someone who's going to come in and really be a team player. So if for some reason you left um, an organization and it wasn't a good fit, it's maybe better to say, you know, it just wasn't a good fit for me. I mean, great company. I enjoyed the opportunity, but I was ready for something new. Great. Um, you, you talked about the succession planning that you took over from the previous the previous owner of the business. Can you talk about the transition? You mentioned there were no st standard operating procedures there, 
what was the transition like as you moved into more of a CEO role and a and a day to day manager? You know, I was I was fortunate because I had a a, a partner, a, a boss, and then a partner. So that's that's a little weird to get through. It takes it takes time to negotiate that relationship. Um, but he was really great at empowering me. So I think in that way, I was really blessed, right? He, he gave me the power to make decisions. And if I didn't make the right one, it was okay. Well, I'm disappointed. Don't do that again. Um, so I think I was, um, but maybe I had also created and demonstrated enough trust. And I'm going to address that here. And, and I do have a few more things to go through about that process. Um, because it's not just given, you know, it's not just granted, it's earned. Um, so I would say um, this, you know, our story, the story is different because I'm not a founder. And I think a lot of who you're going to hear from is someone who is a founder of an organization and not necessarily all entrepreneurs are founders. So I mentioned when I started with this company, we were a small hobby business with a handful of employees. Um, but now for our size, our staffing firm is within, is um, grouped within the top 10% of staffing firms across the United States. And um, according to our tenure, we're probably in the top 5%. Um, now that doesn't mean I'm a big player, but based on our, our corporate sales and where we're at, we're definitely in the top 10%. Um, that makes me proud. I was a part of that journey. Um, my teams were a part of that journey. Um, and we're part of that journey too, because not only were you investing in teams, but we're investing in technology. And I think, you know, kind of going back to your question, reinventing your business all the time, really making it better all the time um, is the key to success. Any business leader who's not really investing in technology and its people and the best practices um, is going to get left behind. You have to stay relevant in the market. Um, so this was not a family business. My partner had bought it from someone else. Um, I didn't necessarily have um, a backing financially uh, to jump into something like this. Um, but over many years, I demonstrated my capability and my credibility. Um, results, I think, is really important. I demonstrated results in the business. Um, and mastery, I learned how to do things well and kept at it. And every day I'm learning something new about business leadership because I'm looking for those inputs all the time and, and making sure I'm investing time on those things. And really what I did is I earned my partner's trust because partners need, um, there's no reason for someone to have a partner unless they need a partner. And so um, I think that's something important to think about. Does this person need you in their organization? And are your values aligned? That's also really important. And are your goals for the organization aligned? Um, as I mentioned before, the timing was good for both of us. Um, and I would also give the advice that in my situation, I was fortunate to have a strong business uh, boss. And he knew a lot of really interesting things. And he was very smart. And I he became my mentor and I would encourage you to make your boss or business owners, your mentor, um, ask questions. They, they want to share, they want to be involved. They want to see your passion. Um, so I guess what I would say is that the owner of the business wouldn't have just done that for anyone. And I don't think that we should expect that people would want to just sell their businesses to us but we can earn that by coming into a, a business, working into it and developing mastery and results and becoming indispensable so that the, the person who owns the business sees that legacy leader, that they can say, yes, this person is going to take the business to the next level. And I can trust that that's going to happen because there's a lot of pride when you own a business and you want it to survive and thrive. Um, Let's see. I also, you know, really liked being able to connect people with their purpose in life. Um, so that was something that was passionate to me. Um, so I, um, 
I did have a few things I just wanted to run through here and then I'm open for questions, but um, if I could, um, oh gosh, I missed a page. Okay, so I also wanted to briefly mention as an aside, there's a lot of ups and downs in business. In 2009, our business went down by 70%. It was um, a devastating time in the Great Recession. The phones quit ringing. You know, the companies were, weren't hiring. We had a handful of great clients that carried us through that time, which I will be forever grateful for. But um, for many years, I was interested in also owning or starting a uh, boutique home health care business for a number of personal reasons. I was interested in this. And I had looked at purchasing, I had looked at franchise, um, and ultimately decided that I wanted to start an independent and learn it from the ground up like I um, like to do things. And so I ran out of excuses in the downturn and started a new company called Loyal Care. And Loyal Care is now 10 years old. We uh, employ dozens of caregivers in Montana. And, um, and, and it's a unique business model and it partners very well with what we also do here at LC Staffing. Um, so I think um, as you have a business, you will see that there are some also interesting intersections and opportunities to continue to see a need in the market and provide a solution. Um, and I think, you know, nagging ideas are really important. If you have an idea that you just can't let go of and it's been months or it's been years, you need to do it. There's a reason why that's been put into your heart. And um, it was a fun and interesting challenge to take on something when the economy was really bad and nothing else was going on. There's a, there's a quote that I had taped up to my computer at that point. And um, it says, even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. And that was a quote by Will Rogers. And so that was my inspiration is I've got to do something. And so I started a new business and um, we hope that that also becomes a legacy business. Um, opportunities are out there everywhere. Uh, I want to mention that there are a lot of baby boomers who own businesses that may not have a succession plan and are looking for their succession plan in the market. Um, so uh, how about some questions? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Kristen. Um, what is one thing that you know now you wished you would have known when you were a high school student? I didn't have very many mentors then. I think educators were my um, lifeline. I'm so grateful to educators. Um, I think that I was given maybe some um, some talents of an ambition and and motivation and I, I think I assumed everybody had those gifts and everybody has different gifts but that thinking and that drive had to be channeled in the right direction and I think mentors would have been very helpful for me again I was 24 when I found my mentor my boss so I was still relatively young and that was that was great timing um, I think serving on boards, if I could encourage you as young people, um, the, the things that I learned the most, some of the most important lessons I learned uh, were by other business leaders or other community leaders. And those people serve on boards. And a lot of boards are looking for their next generation of young leaders. Uh, so it's hard to just get a board seat, right? but you can get involved with an organization and you can serve on a committee. So committee work eventually leads to a board opportunity. Um, and I saw a need in the market when I first moved to Montana that um, I felt like employers didn't really understand fair employment practices very well. And I was frustrated by that. I was frustrated by some of the comments and questions that I heard from employers. And you know, you can't just tell someone how to do something. You have to give them the why and the resources. So I um, 
investigated and learned about an organization nationally and in other parts of the state called the Society of Human Resource Management. And I started going to their meetings across state and decided to start a chapter in the Flathead Valley. Now I was, in my mind, I was in way over my head. I did not know what I was doing, but I started contacting all the HR managers in the community. They aligned, they were very helpful. And we started a really amazing organization that helped to educate employers and um, human resources people in a, in a really powerful way. So um, again, identifying a need in your market um, and, and your generation has access to tools and education and information that maybe a generation or two ahead of you don't have, but you can bring to the market. You just set us up for the next question perfectly. Okay. <laughs> um, as you're, you know, as you're out there recruiting um, and seeing opportunities, what are some of the entrepreneurial opportunities out in the market? If, if these students didn't want to go directly to to a two year or go right into the workforce, but did want to start their own business. I think Montana is wide open for all sorts of opportunities. I mean, just think about the products and services that you wish you had. Um, you know, we're still the wild west. Um, so I really think uh, um, there's so many things I would love to see in Montana. Um, but I, I think that's really a question I would point back to you young people is what what's going to serve you and your generation or your parents you know what need do you see in the market that you would love to have um and i think maybe we need to think outside of the box a little bit and then you know i'm also going to say whatever it is that you're interested in you have to tie that with technology anything that you're gonna do in business now is tied to technology so even if you don't want to go get a four-year degree um, I can't tell you how much we interface with technology all day long in our business and every business owner I have, because you can't really be efficient if you're not really uh, fully utilizing technology. So with this COVID thing going on, the pandemic, um, we have, for example, a screening tool that all of our employees um, survey that they take before they come in to work every morning and they answer questions about their health from their, from their cell phone. Um, so there's just so many things. I think um, Montana is an incredible place to do business and that people want to do business, business with their neighbors. You know, we're, we're still very rural. People love to support their business neighbors and their business community. I wish I, I, wish I could tell you, go do this, you know, but I think uh, that would take all the fun out of it. We're, you you guys are the entrepreneurs. You got to figure it out. Love it. So, what are what are some of the entry level positions that you have open now that you're recruiting for? Maybe a starting salary with benefits packages that they could that these students could start to understand what's out there at the moment. Sure. Um, you know, we mentioned technology, and I've mentioned before that a lot of what we do is based around manufacturing. And I think when people think about manufacturing, they think about old school work. Um, but really, the manufacturing that we work with right now is advanced manufacturing, and it's fascinating. And there's huge growth potential in advanced manufacturing. And I see um, manufacturing across Montana and across the U.S. is really going to expand as we start to bring some of that manufacturing that was outsourced in the 80s and 90s back into the U.S. So again, I think anything related to advanced manufacturing, um, so entry-level jobs, for example, for some of those advanced manufacturing roles would be, oh my gosh, 13 and probably 13 an hour. Um, we our average wage to start is about 14 right now. Um, it varies slightly depending on the market that we're in. Um, also, when you look at a lot of these opportunities, they, they because they're manufacturing, they have great benefits plans. And this isn't something that young people think about, but benefits are very, very expensive. And so when you're looking at the total package, even though you're a young, healthy person, um, regardless of whether or not you're gonna use the health insurance coverage, the vacation pay is really nice. 
getting out on a retirement plan really young is, is nice. I mean, I didn't, I only started doing that in my late twenties because my boss sat me down and talked to me about it. I wish I would have started in my early twenties. Um, so um, I would encourage each of you to look at our job board on our website, lcstaffing.com. We have jobs all across all of Western Montana. Uh, we try to make sure we put as much as possible, if, if we can, the wage on each of those jobs. And again, one of the reasons why candidates like to work with us is that they can hear what's that company like to work with and what perks do they have and what would the schedule be like? We're again, we're that intermediary that can help them really understand what different organizations are like and where they would be a good fit. Great, thank you. Uh, you mentioned the, the COVID pandemic. Um, one of the questions here is, were you ever afraid that you were not going to be able to find work when you got out of high school? Absolutely. Uh, so <laughs> I got out of high school, you guys, in 1986. And in the early 80s, there was a terrible economy going on. You know, I think it wasn't really on my radar uh, because it was just a young person make, making my way out in the world. But I will tell you that in Northern California, where I lived, I would show up for a job interview or to turn in my application and there would sometimes be 100 people there. And I, if I did hear back from companies, I would hear something like, well, we've had 300 job candidates. So as a young person, I mean, it was just like, there's no way I'm going to get a job. You know, you're fortunate that you live in a state that's more rural, so you'll have less competition for the jobs that are available out there. But I also think, you know, again, being willing to take an entry-level job with an organization and to not wait for just the right thing, but what employers want to see is demonstrable work history and a good work ethic. And you know, we have to learn those things. We have to go to work to learn how to have those and hopefully have a good boss that teaches us those things. Um, so I think work experience in general is good and um, it is going to be a tough time, but it's not hard, you guys, for the cream to rise to the top. It's not hard to work a little bit harder than everybody else there or be more willing or uh, be more passionate or have more ideas or help the company grow. Those are all things that are going to stand out. So um, I think just giving your best, giving your best, even in that entry level job and getting out there will serve you very well. That's great, Chris. And those are, there's, for all of you listening on there, that was, that was a couple minutes of really great advice. Um, <laughs> Kristen, we've got a few minutes left. Typically, these go about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, would you like to offer any kind of final advice to high school kids that aren't going to have their traditional end to the school year? There, there might be a little bit of apprehension and nervousness going into, into a new normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I'm hiring internally for recruiters, Sometimes I'll ask a question about, um, tell me about a time in your life when you experienced loss. Because I think that people who've experienced loss and adversity and have had to weather through those are very mature, resilient people because loss teaches us a lot of things. And what you guys are experiencing is a loss, a great loss. It's not fair. And life isn't fair. I experienced a great amount of loss as a young adult. <clears throat> I lost um, my stepfather and my mother and my grandparents all within about a year. And it was devastating. Um, but it also taught me resiliency and grit and how to focus on the things that are really important in life. And, you know, now as I look back on all that loss, I don't know that I would have had, you know, maybe the sense of urgency and the, and the drive um, that I developed because I experienced those losses. So I think it's important to recognize loss. I think it's important to grieve the loss. 
but to realize that your generation will be impacted by this and um, there will be good things that come from it if you allow that. Um, I think our society in general, it's just interesting to think that how at any time we can be, um, have our whole lives turned upside down and uh, we can't take um, normal for granted because normal can change at any time. So your generation will be um, uniquely prepared for that and will uniquely have the opportunity to provide solutions for that in the future. I think that's a fantastic note to, to end on, Kristen, is you know what the, the renaissance of this, what is, what is this generation gonna provide to the world? And I'm really excited, I have two kids, I'm looking forward to, to seeing that also. Um, but thank you so much for, for giving us your hour this morning, we really appreciate it. And if you could share those video links with me, I will be happy to send them out. Do you want to hand it back to you for this last slide, if you'd like? Sure, yeah, just a, a quick note on some things uh, that I would encourage you to do. I think we covered all of these. Um, but, you know, be keeping your eye out there for a business that maybe doesn't have a succession plan. I think um, don't assume that a business is going to have a family member that's going to um, continue to run the business. That's actually pretty rare that that happens. Um, so be looking out for opportunities in the market. Um, and then believe in yourself and give yourself some grace. Um, you, you guys are um, definitely leaders or you wouldn't be on this call. You wouldn't be in this class. And I'm just so excited for you. And again, I would encourage you, if you ever uh, would like to reach out to me for a resource or to have a conversation, um, I would welcome that. And um, I hope you have a, a fantastic summer. And I wanna encourage you, whether it's through LC Staffing or another staffing firm, that you consider getting registered and set up because those organizations can provide some really great opportunities for you to learn and experience different industries and roles to see if it's something that's a fit for you. And, you know, I, I tried dozens of different opportunities and things before I landed at LC Staffing and then, you know, it kind of lit my brain on fire. And eventually you'll find that thing, but we can provide opportunities for you to try uh, different jobs um, and different opportunities across the state. Thanks, you, thanks so much for having me today. Um, I wish I could see each of you and say um, congratulations and um, that we're cheering for you. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen. That was great. What a great Sasquatch quote to, to end on that. <laughs> I love it. That is amazing. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And we'll be sharing this out with all the rest of your educators. Um, if you'd like to watch and, and pull some more of Kristen's uh, great wisdom and advice out. Thank you again, Kristen. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.